So uh, when you guys are using your Prasim and everything's checking out good, how do you tell it's actually the guy's router and how do you approach him and say, hey, your wifi is not working? Okay, I'm just gonna just gonna repeat it. So, I would, um, so the question is basically, if you're, you're debugging a customer problem, how do you use Prasim to identify if it's a home problem or an access point or a tower kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, how do you deal with the customer? Okay. Uh, okay. So how do you convince them they bought garbage? Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough conversation to have. Um, I think you just, uh, from a support person's perspective, it's it's about finding those people that just know how to communicate well to the, pe the person and probably not being too overly technical about it. I know early on it was easy for me to say, well, yeah, your, your PlayStation's, you know, using all your bandwidth. And they're like, how do you know that? And they're like, can you see what I'm doing? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, so, you, you just, yes. if, you, if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I don't care, but you know, so you just have to be careful about how, how you approach it and just say, hey, well, I mean, everything up to our, you know, our equipment's good and we, it just looks like that you're having a poor experience inside the home and you just have to explain that to the person because um, really most people need it in layman's terms, you know, so you just got to figure out how to dumb it down and say, okay, this is what we're seeing and this is why and they're going to argue about their $300 Apple router and that it's perfect and it's fine and you just, you just got to continue to talk your way through it. Um, for us in pre -seam, you know, if their signal checks out, if they're like a neg 55 signal, perfect MCS rates, a link test comes back good, we're going to probably assume it's their router <laughs> or the connection between their end user device and the router, right? right. Um, so just because you have a great router doesn't mean it can go through five walls in your house of concrete through tile, right? So having a managed router in the house is extremely important. Yeah. And for us, every new customer now gets a, a managed router from us. Uh, we decided on Calyx about two and a half years ago, uh, a little before we decided to go with Preseam as well. Uh, so every home, every new install gets a Calyx router in there so we can now see what signal levels their devices have. Um, so if there's a customer connection, we split the bands now too, so we have a 2G and a 5G band on the router so we know which one they're connected to. If they have a device at a NEG88, NEG87 on 2 gigahertz, 2.4 in the house, we know that's probably the latency we're seeing in Preseam. Uh, so that point, we now we say, well, you know, you're not you're receiving great signal this far from your router. It's not a router problem. It's a house. It's a physics problem. Right. Now, we don't go into the physics. We just say every wall and everything that is between your iPad or your iPhone and the router causes signal loss. So if you want great service in this end of the house and the router's on the opposite end, we probably need to put a mesh somewhere halfway in between mm -hmm. and then get your device on 5 gigahertz. So now you're going to have a great clean signal without interference from the neighbors but this mesh costs five bucks a month. That's what it costs to have great whole home Wi-Fi. And if they're not willing to do that, we note their account that they refused to accept our solution. And if they call back again, that's the first thing we refer to. We say, we told you last time, you know, last month or three months ago that you, your home needed a, a mesh to expand your coverage and we're gonna revisit that again because you're calling in and you want it to work perfect. Here's what it costs to work perfect. I don't have a lot to add to that other than we did the same. Uh, we added managed routers. Um, what was the real tipping point was I was helping a customer and they had their Netgear plugged in backwards um, because they just couldn't figure out, figure out how to get it to work. They couldn't, they couldn't ever make it work when it was plugged into that yellow port. So this is the way that they could get the internet to work. And it's because they, you know, Netgear came out with their little walled garden setup because people would roll Netgear out with, you know, admin and password and never touch it. And so uh, in Netgear's attempt to make people slightly more secure, they ended up making it more difficult so people who can't, you know, read a one-page instruction card fail. And so uh, it was our problem anyway. Um, we're, we're having to fix their problem, and so we may as well get paid to do so. So we initially added managed router as an add-on option. You know, 10 bucks a month, managed router. If something happens to it, we replace it. Um, that worked for, you know, probably 60 to 65% of new installs. Um, and then the ones that we kept getting complaints from were the ones that went and bought the, you know, $80 router from Walmart or any, basically anything, yeah. right? Any router that they bought that said Netgear or Belkin or Linksys on it. Uh, those were the customers that were the most expensive to support. Uh, they didn't understand how to set it up. Uh, you know, they were probably way out of date on firmware, had you know, various issues fixed in that firmware, um, but they're not maintaining it and managing it. 
And so uh, we reduce the price by $5 a month for the managed router. And if you're residential, you're just taking it. Um, and if you want your own Wi-Fi behind that or a router behind that, go ahead and plug it in. But at least now we have a test point to get into the house. So if it is a, you know, uh, Ethernet issue or PoE brick issue, we have some visibility into that uh, beforehand. And generally speaking, almost all of our residential customers now have a managed um, router, and so we can look to see that they have a you know poor signal, just like Darren said, or they or they see, oh hey, it's it's five gigahertz, so it must be super fast. It's that 5G thing. So <laughs> let me connect to that, even though I'm in my metal shop building that's 100 feet from the house, and you know you've got a Neg 90, and I just can't figure out why I'm having poor performance. <laughs> Follow up on that. Did you do a truck roll to move all of your pre-existing customers to managed Wi-Fi? Uh, just sorry, just to repeat. Did, did you have to roll a truck to take out routers to all these these customers as you did that? Or did, did they install it themselves? So we didn't force it on existing customers. We uh, we pretty much grandfather people in plan, service, whatever. Uh, but as we roll out higher speeds, we entice them to take our device. So hey, your price is going to go up by $5 a month, but you get a managed router out of it and your speeds are you know, two times as fast or four times as fast or, or whatever the case may be. So um, we're interested in getting it done, not because we really want to see what's in there, but I want to enable our techs to be able to better support from remote and have first call resolution. Um, so for new customers, we pretty much just include it free. There's zero cost, so there's zero incentive for them to buy their own is what we're going with now. Um, for in the past, we did do $10 a month, and we had like that same 60% take rate. Uh, we wanted 100% though, so we've raised all our new plan prices by 10 bucks a month, so we're still getting paid for it. It's just no longer an add-on. But we tell customers it's a promotion. You're getting the managed router for free for the life of your account. They're really happy about it. Um, for existing customers, any time a customer calls in for anything, a speed upgrade, a tech support call, a billing issue, anything, if they do not have a managed router, we do our absolute best to upsell them to a plan that supports it and that includes it already currently for free. Um, we give them the choice to come and pick it up for free and we give them a little one page guide on how to plug it in. Um, I would tell you, even with the guide and pictures, Half of them can't figure it out. It's it's really pathetic, to be honest. Um, um, but basically, they, if they pick the router up for it, it's cost nothing. If they ask us to come out and set it up and plug it in, we charge them eighty bucks. We've not had anyone actually have to have us come out and do it yet. Um, the other half that couldn't figure it out, we it's usually a one minute phone call. They forgot to reboot the PoE, even though it's in step two in bold and then step three bold and red underline. They still <laughs> miss rebooting the PoE. It's crazy. So um, we're at a seventy percent of all of our customers have a managed router in the house today and we're slowly working towards that 100% or 99%. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. So, Calix, I know when I was first looking at them, it was like, they charged like $10 per subscriber. Have they changed their pricing substantially? The question is, is Calix home routers very expensive? <laughs> Uh, I, for the savings, I, I've seen, I'll just say this, like pre-seam, you know, uh, a good billing system like PowerCode Sonar, we use Azatel, and a good managed router platform, It what you pay for that saves you way more money than what you pay for it, okay? Uh, we've uh, been able to avoid hiring extra staff members because we have all this automation and all these tools that help us make these decisions and help a customer that we can avoid throwing money at the problem by hiring a body body who gets sick, who complains a lot, who needs health insurance. Okay, pre doesn't need any of that stuff. Calix doesn't need any of that stuff, and I don't pay taxes on any of those people, or you know the services that I'm using. So I look at it as you're paying some money up front or annually or monthly for these services, but they save you having to hire more people, and it leads to better customer experience and happier customers. Um, so Calix is just over for us, just over 100 bucks for a router, shh, don't tell anybody. You didn't hear it from me, okay? So it's a cheap router. It's not cheap, but it's affordable. It's four by four, multi-user, MIMO, five gigahertz. It's like the gold standard of routers. Um, 
What's that? It's the ugliest box you've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's like a black textbook. It's not very pretty, but it, at least it doesn't have like eight antennas like the Nighthawks. You know, that's even uglier for customers to leave out in their living room. Um, and then the support costs are anywhere between four and eight or four and ten dollars per year per customer. So it ends up being, you know, like maybe 50 cents a month, roughly. Um, yeah, per year cost on that divided by 12, it's about 50 cents a month. But again, it saves you lots of time and money. I think it's very affordable for what it is. Yes, there's platforms that cost nothing or that cost, you know, a dollar per year, but they're just not as polished, I guess, if you want to call it that, as uh, what we're using with Calyx. I think what I'm hearing is that Darren is taking applications for robots. So if anybody <laughs> wants robots, that's what he's looking for. And, and there is not a requirement to buy Calyx's, you know, cloud platform. No. So um, it gets more expensive if you get beyond 500 devices, uh, but you also get a bigger tool set. Um, but you, you can just go buy the hardware and fling it in there and you can use your own homebrew. They're using TRO-69. I mean, that's a, that's a standard across many uh, telecommunications platforms. So if you just want to be able to push firmware updates on mass, uh, collect some basic you know, statistics and things like that. Uh, you've got them. Um, we're using the 844E model. There's also their newer Gigaspire, which is the AX based chipset. Um, and I think you can buy those with like Alexa built in so you can have an additional service to sell to your customers. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that they've eliminated every single issue because you're never going to get, you know, that product that would be affordable, but it's, it's worth the um, price increase over buying a cheaper, like a ReadyNet or Cambium or one of those routers, in my experience, um, and then having the centralized management, uh, you know, becomes important, you know, as you scale. So, I mean, it, it, that's one of those things that uh, if you start flinging Calyx product out, out of the box, it's going to phone home to the mothership, and they will be collecting TRO-69 data uh, when you plug it in. And if you're purchasing it through Calyx, they're going to have all of the FSAN and data. They're going to know that Eden uh, bought this particular unit so that in three years, when you decide, well, I want this support cloud thing now, you can go back, buy that, and then get all the data uh, pushed over to you. Okay. The reason why I was asking you is when I looked at it three years ago, it was much more expensive on that monthly basis. And they were pretty much the only guys who found it really did a good job. But since then, if you go down on the floor now, you'll find a lot of different. Yeah, th three years ago, their support cloud was a bag of crap. Uh, <laughs> so I, I've, I've told them that. I don't mind being on video telling yeah. them how terrible it was. It was built on FinePoint. FinePoint did all the heavy lifting, and they threw some Calyx logos in it. It was not intuitive. It was way faster to just log directly into the web UI, do whatever changes you wanted. Their uh, new support cloud is, is far easier, uh, making an SSID change for a customer, those sort of things. Um, you know, running some smart checks on Wi-Fi. Uh, they've, again, just brought um, more technical abilities to people that aren't particularly technical. Um, so, so if you have a staff of, you know, customer support people, uh, who aren't necessarily network engineers or understanding RF, it's one of those tools that, that will you know, help empower them to get the right answer uh, on the first call. Okay. Maybe one more question in this area, and then I want to move on to something else. Uh, what I was trying to bring up to the crowd here is that a managed router at the customer is to make your life so much more simpler because what the precinct says there's a problem with the customer. Helps you figure out what. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, absolutely, 100%. And, and for us, it's not a money maker, it's a money saver. Mm -hmm. okay. So, like Darren said, you don't have to have the extra support staff trying to convince grandma that the Linksys 11B router that her son bought her in 2004 is a pile of junk. <laughs> you know, uh, it, you're, you're just getting that further into the, the house and you're going to get blamed for it. Mm -hmm. So I have you know, a neighbor a couple doors down that uh, is on a competitor's service and I really don't want him as a customer <laughs> <coughs> but yeah you know, he regularly complains to me oh my you know the computer slow again it's like well is it the 
Well, when I start it up, it takes forever. It's not, it's not them. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and call them and spend <laughs> as much time as you would like. <laughs>